Gunsmoke. Brought to you by Chesterfield, America's most popular two-way cigarette. What a pair. Chesterfield king size at the new low price. Chesterfield regular. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gun Smoke, starring William Conrad. The transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America. And the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job. And it makes a man watchful. And a little... lonely. Shut the door, Chester. It's fly time. Yes, sir, I know, but I think you'd better come... Shut the door, will you? Oh. Mr. Dillon? All right, Chester. Now, what are you so riled up about? Cleft Braden and Howard Rabb. Braden and Rabb? It's too hot for those two to be causing any trouble, isn't it? Oh, it sure is hot, sir, but that don't bother them. They, they get a chance to bully somebody, they do it in the middle of a blizzard. Yeah, we were talking about heat, not cold, Chester. Yes, yeah, sir. But don't let that stop you. No, sir. Why don't you start right from the beginning, huh? Yes, sir. Good. Well, sir, there's a little Chinese fellow with a pigtail and all, a real Chinaman. He just come in to dodge on a freighter's wagon, and uh-huh. right now, Braden and Rab, they got him pushed up against the wall out there. What? Well, well, what for? What are they doing to him? Well, they're not hurting him, but they're kind of deviling him and poking fun at him, and I don't think they are. I told them to leave him alone. But, Mr. Dillon, I sure do wish you'd go tell him. All right, Chester, I'll go tell him. I do declare if there's anything I hate, it's a bully. Well, maybe they're just curious about him, Chester. I guess he's the first Chinaman that's ever been in Dodge. Mm, wait till you hear him. There they are, yonder. I don't think he understands a word they're saying. He, he, he's just backed up there, staring at him and holding tight to that little box he's got. Well, maybe that's what they want. That little box? Well, there couldn't be much in it. Probably just his medicine or something. He's not an Indian, Chester. No, sir, but maybe them Chinese fellas have medicine, too. Look there how he's hanging on to it. <laughs> you sure don't talk very good, do you, Rat? Somebody must have split his tongue. No, Chinese boys always sound like that. Here, now look, fella. I'm just going to ask you once more. What you doing here in Dallas? Me come catch a job. Me all time work hard. Job, huh? Well, you're the first Chinaman i ever seen around here. I sure hope you ain't brought your family with you. No family. One mom, one boy, all the same as me. No family. Well, that's one good thing. Why shouldn't the man have a family, huh? Rab? Oh. Hello, Marshal. Why shouldn't he have a family? Well, you want a lot of Chinamen running around loose here? No, got family. Got cousin, one cousin, San Francisco, him, very good Chinaman. What's your name, fella? Chen Long Wang. Me good boy. Got place, Dodge City. All time work hard. Well, you go all time work hard in San Francisco, because we sure don't need no Chinamen here. Chen, I'm the marshal here, and you're welcome in Dodge. You can stay here just as long as you like. What are you mixing in this for, Marshal? Ain't no law says we got to have China boys around here. You ain't got no right protecting him. He's just a dirty foreigner, ain't Except he? for the Indians. We're all foreigners here, Brayden. And I told you, you're welcome, and you are. And if either one of these men bother you again, you come tell me about it, huh? No fight. Very bad men fight. Whoever heard of the law standing up for China? I don't I care don't... if he's an Eskimo, Rab. You leave him alone. Well, look look at that box, Marshal. It's probably full of money he stole somewhere. No money. Chen, very good boy. No steal money. Oh, who's going to believe Get you? out of here. What? Both of you, go on. Move. See about this later. I never heard of nothing like it. Me very sad, Marshal. Chen, no right to bring trouble. Well, I'll worry about the trouble, Chen. Tell me, uh, what, what kind of work do you do? Me cut place. Very good cook. A cook, huh? Uh, 
What kind of cooking do you do, Chan? All kind. Chinese cook, American cook, all kind. Say now, I never ate no Chinese food. What's it like? Very good. You see, when I cut the job. You know what, Mr. Dillon? We ought to take him over to the Dodge house. Oh, why? Well, sir, Mr. Green fired the cook he had yesterday. Might be he ain't found another one yet. Well, all right, Chester. Uh, you take him over, huh? I got to do some work back at the office. Okay, sir. You come on along with me, Chan. Very good. We come. And remember what I said about Rab and Braden, Chan. You come tell me if they give you any trouble. <laughs> What a pair. What a buy. They're talking about Chesterfield king size at the new low price. And Chesterfield regular, America's most popular two-way cigarette. Maybe you've noticed in recent weeks how many king size smokers are changing to Chesterfield. In sizing up the king size situation, it's a fact that today you get more value from king size Chesterfield than from any other king size cigarette. What a buy. Chesterfield gives you highest quality, low nicotine. You get the taste you want, the mildness you want, a really refreshing smoke every time. Chesterfield King Size is the one and only premium quality King Size cigarette. Buy a carton at the new low price. Chesterfield King Size. Chesterfield Regular. They satisfy millions. They're best for you. Mr. Green at the Dodge House took a chance and hired Chen Wong that day. And it turned out he wasn't lying about being a good cook. He was about the best that we'd ever had in Dodge. And neither was he lying about working hard. Mr. Green let him sleep in a storeroom off the kitchen. And there he stayed. Out of sight. And for a while, out of trouble. There was some talk about heathen Chinese and how we didn't need any of them in Dodge, but... Nobody did anything about it. And I was hoping everything was going to be all right. Until one day when I happened to go up to Doc Adams' office just to kill a little time. Oh, hello, Matt. Come in, come in. How are you, Doc? I'll be right with you, Matt. As I finish with Chen Wong here. Oh? Uh -huh. Well, what's the matter with Chen? There, lying right there. That's what was the matter with him. Oh, you lost the tooth, huh? Well, Chen, you'd have been better off doing the job yourself. Doc's as likely to pull a good one as a bad one. Forgiveness isn't one of your greatest virtues, is it, man? You know, I lost a perfectly good tooth that day, Doc, and you still charge me for it. And why not? I took the bad one out, too, didn't I? Oh, yeah, sure. Finally, once you got sobered up. When you know. I get a sobered, oh. I had been 48 hours without sleep. Uh -huh. I delivered two babies. 30 miles apart, too, and in the dead of winter. Oh, I should have let your jaw go on aching. Might have taught you a lesson. What kind of a lesson, Doc? Humility. Well, I always figured I was a pretty humble man. Oh, yes, you did. You, humble? Oh, 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 you're about as humble as a Bronco Apache. <laughs> there you are, Chen. I'm through. But you better let me take a look at that in there, too. Thank you, Doctor. I'll come back. How much do I owe you? Five dollars. May I pay you next time? You see, I won't get my salary from Mr. Green until Saturday, and I have no money except for that. Why, sure, Chen, of course, any oh, time. I'll be here. <laughs> Chen, the first time I saw you, you were, you were being a belly good Chinese boy, all the time working hard, catching job, that kind of a thing. Is that not how a Chinese is supposed to talk, Marshal? <laughs> well, I thought it was till just now. Most of my countrymen do talk like that, Marshal. English is a very difficult language for us. Well, what about you? I was more fortunate than most. When I first came to America, I worked for a man who was very kind. He taught me and made me study and practice several hours every day. I see. But uh, why were you talking the other way when I first saw you? Experience has taught me that many men resent a Chinese who does not talk the way they expect him to. I wish to avoid 
Popple. Uh, Chen's on his way to China, Matt. He's going home so he can save up enough money for his passage. Oh, is that right? Well, I wish you luck, Chen. Thank you, Marshal. I must get back to work now. Good day, gentlemen. <laughs> so long, Chen. So long. Ah. Oh. Yeah. He's a nice fella, isn't he? Yeah, he is, Doc. You know, I believe him about being broke, too. Oh, why shouldn't you? Well, haven't you heard? Heard what? Why, that Pless, Braden, and Howard Rab. They've been saying Chen's got lots of money. They say he keeps it hid in that little box of his. Huh? No, I hadn't heard that, Doc. Yeah, well, I don't believe a word of it. I think he's broke, just like he says. Well, it doesn't matter much. Uh, why, what do you mean? With well, that kind of talk going around, he's going to be in trouble. There are men besides Braden and Rab who would murder Chen for his money and not even think it was a crime. Yes, I suppose you're right, Matt. I'd better go have a talk to Chen, Doc. I'll see you later. I had a talk with Chen. Tried to get him to put his box in the bank and then let everybody know that he'd done so. But he said he wanted the box near him and that he'd keep it hidden in his room. I couldn't argue him out of it, and I knew there'd be trouble. And sure enough, a couple of days later, it happened. Though not the way I'd expected. It was noon, and Chester and I were headed for the Dodge house to have a little dinner. Mr. Dillon, you know what old Teeters has went and done? No, what, Chester? He has started charging 30 cents for a haircut. Huh? Oh? Now, can't something be done about that? (laughs) Well, I can think of one thing, Chester. What's that? Let your hair grow. Hello, Marshal. Hello, John. Let my hair grow and look like a buffalo hunter. Hey, the restaurant looks mighty deserted, Mr. Dillon. Maybe it's closed today. Let's find out. Mm. There's Mr. Green. Hello, Green. You closed today? Hello, Marshal. Chester. Hello, Mr. Green. I'm closed, Marshal. I haven't got a cook. What? Chen. He won't cook today. I don't know what's the matter with him. He won't even talk. Well, where is he? Sitting in his room back there on the floor. Just sitting there and staring at his hands. Well, maybe he's sick. No, no, he isn't sick. But there's something wrong with him. Maybe you can find out what it is, Marshal. He might talk to you. Okay, I'll try. Uh, you better stay here, Chester. All right. It's the storeroom right off the kitchen, Marshal. Door's open. Yeah, okay, I'll find it, thanks. Hello, Chen. Hello, Marshal. Uh, can I come in? I'd like to talk to you. Come in. What's the matter, Chen? Are you sick? No. Uh, tell me something, Chen. What, Marshal? Do you consider me a friend? I believe you are. Good. Well, then maybe you'll let me help you. In what way? Well, I don't know. You're going to have to tell me what's wrong first. It would be difficult for you to understand, Marshal. Well, maybe, but tell me anyway. I am Chinese, Marshal. I have lived many years in America, but I am still... Chinese. Yeah. But go on. Years ago, my country was overrun by a tribe of Tatars called the Manchus. As they took each city, they required the inhabitants to shave around their heads, leaving only a long strand of hair to be braided into a queue. It was a sign of subjugation, but that has been forgotten, and now the queue, or pigtail, as you call it, is of great importance to us. Wait a minute, Chen. I just noticed. Where's yours? To lose the queue is a great disgrace to us, Marshal. Yeah, I've heard that. Well, who did it, Chen? Two men. The same two. Braden and Rab? They came here last night. They wanted my treasure box. And you wouldn't tell them where it is, so they cut off your pigtail, is that it? They took it away with them, Marshal. That makes my disgrace even worse. Ah. Chen, I think maybe I understand how you feel about this. Uh, would it help any if I get it back for you? I am a peaceful man, Marshal. 
But if I do not get it back, I must kill those two. No. No, now don't you go killing anybody. You let me handle this, huh? I'm very sorry, Marshal, for all the trouble. Yeah, but you wait here, Chen. I'll see what I can do. You find them, Chester? Yes, sir. They're in there, Mr. Dillon, standing over at the bar. Good. Place is about empty except for Braden and Rab. Are they drunk? I don't know. I didn't talk to them. There they are. Yeah. Well, if it ain't Marshal Dillon. Hey, you gonna buy us a drink? Eh, hey, Marshal? I thought I told you men to stay away from Chen Wong. Chen Wong? Well, now what's he yelling about? His pigtail. He wants it back. I don't know what you're talking about, Marshal. We ain't seen Chen since the day he first come here. You went to his room last night, didn't you, and cut off his pigtail when he wouldn't tell you where his treasure box was? No, we didn't, Marshal. I don't even know where his room is. Chen's been lying to you, Marshal. All them heathen foreigners is liars. I want that pigtail, Rab. Now, where is it? I don't know nothing about it, I tell you. What are you standing up for him for? He ain't even a citizen. I don't care what he is. I'm standing up for him. Well, it wasn't us. Honest, Marshal, we didn't do it. Well, maybe I ought to beat the truth out of you, huh? We're telling you the truth now, Marshal. I don't believe you. Now you get that pigtail back to Chen or you're in trouble. What do you mean, trouble? You'll find out when it's too late. And there's nothing I can do to stop it. I went back to Chen and tried to explain things to him. He didn't say much, but I could see that his mind was made up. And so I told him what had happened if he killed anybody. But that didn't bother him. He said he'd kill himself when it was over. And then I got mad at him for being so stubborn. And I was sorry for it right away. I guess he figured I didn't understand after all. So I left him feeling pretty helpless. Well, that night he made his first move. I found out about it at the Texas Trail where I dropped in to say hello to Kitty. It sure has been a long day, Matt. I'm worn out and I got the whole night ahead of me yet. Oh, what happened today, Kitty? Oh, Sam over there got the bright idea of offering every other drink on the house any soldier that walked in here. (laughs) Well, that's one way of keeping this saloon full. Sure is. If he goes on, I might as well move out to Fort Dodge and join the Army. I think it'd be easier. You know something? I think they'd be glad to have you, Kitty. I mean as a soldier. Hey, that's an idea. Lady soldiers. There are darn few jobs women couldn't do. Anywhere. Marshal Dillon? Marshal? What's on your mind, Rap? That, uh, that Chinaman, that's what. He's haunting us, me and Braden. And if he don't stop it, I'm, I'm going to put a bullet in him. What do you mean, he's haunting you? Well, all afternoon he's been following us. Wherever we go, he just stands around, staring at us. Drives a man crazy after a while. I'm warning you, Marshal, I'm going to shoot him. Good, and I can come to your hanging. What's the matter with her, anyway? Rab, I told you before to give Chen back his pigtail. He won't bother you if you do. You still believe him, don't you, Marshal? Yeah, I believe him. It's a fine thing when a U.S. Marshal takes the word of a stinking, dirty little... Shut up! Get out of here, Rap. Go on. All right. I'm going. Matt, you better do something about that. I'll kill Chen, sure. Unless he kills him first, Kitty. I'll go tell Chester to keep an eye on him. I'll see you later. Sure. We will return for the last act of gun smoke in just a moment. What a pair. What a buy. Chesterfield king size at the new low price. And Chesterfield regular. 
And what a pair these Chesterfield smokers are. She's a great name in amateur tennis. Famed for all-round hard-hitting games. He's the famous home run hitter for the Chicago Cubs. He's Ralph Kiner. She's Mrs. Ralph Kiner, known to tennis fans as Nancy Chafee. Nancy, why do you smoke Chesterfield? I'll tell you why. Because Chesterfields taste the best. They're so mild and refreshing. How about you, Ralph? I go along with that. Chesterfields have really got what it takes. It's a great cigarette. What a pair. What a buy. Chesterfield king size. Chesterfield regular. Buy a carton of Chesterfield King Size at the new low price. And remember, either way, they satisfy millions. They're best for you. I sure am sorry, Mr. Dillon. Where did you lose them, Chester? Well, sir, they was in the Alphaganza having a drink, and I was watching them like you told me. Then a fellow come up to me, and we started talking, and next time I looked, they was gone. All three of them. So I come after you. Well, we'll find them. Yes, sir, I sure do hope so. Ken was carrying his little box, Mr. Dillon, right under his arm, and he... Hey, look over there. What? What's everybody crowding up the alley for? Well, let's go to see All right, fellas, let the marshal through here now. Stand back, everybody. Clyde, Cruz, stand back. Mr. Dillon, it's Chan. Yeah. He's been strangled, Chester. Strangled? With his pigtail. Yeah, they gave it back to him, all right. Hey, look there. It's a knife. Got blood all over it, too. Yeah, give it to me. It's a butcher knife. Chen must have cut one of them. Maybe both. Uh-oh. That'll make it easier to track them. Yeah. How do you men stay here? I don't want anybody following us. You understand? All right, come on, Chester. <laughs> Easy now. They may be waiting for us. Yes, sir. There's something laying over there by that rain barrel. Huh? It's man. Yeah. Yeah, That's Howard Rabb, Chester. Looks like Chen cut him up pretty bad. Is he dead? Yeah, he's dead. Well, now let's find Braden. Get out, Chester. Go on back, Marshal. You ain't gonna take me. He's out with that shed there, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Now, look, you stay here, Chester, and keep down. I'm gonna crawl up to where I can see him. I'll yell at him a little to keep his attention. Okay. You ain't got a chance, Braden. Go on back, I tell you. That's mighty poor shooting, Braden. You must be awful scared. Did Ken get his knife into you, too? You stand up, Chester. I'll be happy to kill you. All right, drop your gun, Braden. No, no. Uh, uh. Okay, Chester. Did you kill him? Yeah, I killed him. Well, sir, I guess you had to. Oh, there's Chen's treasure box. Chester, pick it up, will you? Here it is, sir. I guess that's what they killed him for. Must be full of money after all. Yeah, let's take a look. 
Yes, sir. By golly, it is money. Yeah, this much is money, Chester. Four dollars. Four dollars? Is that all? Yeah, that's all. What's that other paper? Here, strike a match, Chester, will you? Hold it over here. Mm -hmm. Well, looks like kind of a document, don't it? What's it say? Well, I can't see it very well. Yeah. I'm about Chen Lang Wong. Was of invaluable service, intelligence, General McClellan's Army of the Potomac, Peninsula Campaign, March 1862. Here. Yeah. In recognition. Something, something, something. Chen Lang Wong is hereby granted full citizenship of the United States. And Ulysses S. Grant, president. Well, I'll be doggone. Yeah, it looks like Chen wasn't exactly a foreigner after all, doesn't it? Poor little fellow. Chester. Yes, sir? I'm going to take this letter out to Colonel Mast at Fort Dodge. I, uh, I got an idea he might want to give Chen Wong a military burial. Oh, that'd be fine. And while I'm gone, you can drag these other two off and throw them in a hole on Boot Hill. star, William Conrad. Whether you like a long cigarette or a regular size smoke, it's my opinion your best bet is Chesterfield, regular or king. You can't beat them for a good taste, for a mild smoke. Try Chesterfield. Gunsmoke, transcribed under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Edgar Barrier, Lawrence Dobkin, Paul Dubov, and John Daner. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in... Gun smoke. Filter tip smokers, this is it. L and M filters. At last, the filter tip cigarette with much more flavor, much less nicotine. L and M's miracle tip contains alpha cellulose for effective filtration. It's the filter that counts. And L and M has the best. Yes, this is it. As David Wayne puts it, L and M filters are just what the doctor ordered. Buy L and M filters, the light and mild smoke. Next week, at this same time, Chesterfield will bring you another story of the Western Frontier on Gun Smoke. This is the CBS Radio Network.